hello and welcome back to another video um this this came to me in a bit of a blinding flash and the end of the day we had rare unusually we had a very nice sunny warm day without a lot of wind it's blowing again today hence i'm in my little homemade summer house here and um i was looking at a certain plant in the garden and i thought my goodness you know um if I'd have gone back, say, um, 50 years to 1973, we had one of these plants in our garden. Well, we had two because it was quite a fashionable plant to grow back then. I'll come on to the plant in a minute or two. And it was quite a fashionable plant. And anyway, this plant, this time of year, you know, at the end of July, early August, used to be a wash, a sea of butterflies. So that's probably given the plant away to you, and it was the, the Buddleia, I think it's Buddleia Davidi, or some, oh, there again, I'll put it up, the, gar the proper garden variety. It's become, it's become a bit of a, a, a pest, and a lot of people don't grow it in their gardens anymore, probably quite rightly, because it's, um, it's the scourge of railways. It even grows in lime mortar on old houses, and um, the guy over the road, I had to do him a favour, it even, wouldn't even sprung up, on his chimney and um, started to grow out the, <clears throat> um, at, like the haunching of the chimney. Um, and I got a lad along enough and I got up and pulled it all out for him. So it can really be a scourge plant. I still have a, one that's grown in a tub. There again, in a scrappy bit of the garden. But I was looking at it the other day in full sun, it was a warm day. There wasn't one butterfly on the on the but this buddleia it was full out it is just starting to go over now um and i thought my goodness you know if i cast my mind back to a child you know um well i was a teenager in in 1973 50 years ago and um you know where we lived i also lived in this locality in the same village then in another house which got a much bigger garden and um you know the buddleia we had a white one and a purpley colored one and they, they were just absolutely teeming with butterflies and um, apparently you know 80% of the butterfly population in the UK have disappeared which is um, which is quite tragic when you think about it um, and uh, you know round here I can't put my finger on why that should be apparently i had no no idea or inclination of this apparently a lot died in that really hot weather last year apparently butterflies don't like it too hot or the uk temperate butterflies don't like it too hot and when the temperatures got up to the 40s 41 42 which was recorded for a few days um at the end of july it um apparently that killed a lot of butterflies but um you know, um, 80% is a huge, you know, um, downturn in the butterfly population. And um, I so say around here, um, we leave our, I, I, I've got a hedge just over from this summer house, which has got then this three foot of land, which we have rights to. Um, the other side of the hedge, and we always leave that, I let it grow up. It has nettles, it has buttercups, it has all sorts of plants. The, there's 300 acres of meadowland then down there with a the river, with some woodlands, some very old woodlands, some oak trees that are 250 years old and a double-sided hedge, which is medieval. Um, and none of this has had any herbicides or pesticides sprayed on it. Um, now, just 10 years ago, the meadow behind us used to be full of blue butterflies, little meadow blue butterflies in the summer. Um, certainly, it wasn't farmed. It had been almost abandoned then, the land. The farm had died, and it took a long while for the family situation to get sorted out and, and for the land to be tenanted again, and now it's grazed by sheep. And so the land has changed a little bit and um you know it was let go and um but it, it's bewildering when you think where have these butterflies gone uh, perhaps in your locality 
you still have plenty of butterflies. But sadly here, um, this year I'm sort of now, I've sort of quite been recording what I see. Um, and I've seen a couple of Red Admiral butterflies, which are lovely, some peacock butterflies. There are still quite a few cabbage, what I call cabbage white, white butterflies about. Um, I, as a child, I used to love these. I used to have a huge, I've still got a huge collection. I, but as a child with pocket money, I was a great um, reader of books, um, not story books, um, you know, non-fiction books, like these little observer books. And I used to, you know, I've got a whole collection of these. And, you know, I used to love looking at these and um, the different butterflies, you know, in them and reading about the species. And, and, um, and the Red Admiral is one of my favourite butterflies. And I've seen two of those this week. I was hoping to take a bit of video of them, but they've, they've, <laughs> they've gone off again and not reappeared, I think, because of this windy weather. Um... I think there's, um, did I read, I think there's something like 57 species of butterflies that are native to the UK. And, um, and you see five of those species of butterflies. I think the tortoise shell is one, or the small tortoise shell, the red admiral, uh, the peacock, and one. there's probably two more that I can't remember offhand. They do overwinter as butterflies. And um, one wonders whether there's not the sheds old outbuildings you know for them to go in although i've just read in my little observer book that they they will go in crevices in trees in thick hedges in ivy and there's loads of that you know all around us um so there's obviously you know um a reason for this and why you know um maybe it's to do with the climate as i say because around here in this micro sort of you know um It'll say these 300 acres of land, um, nothing has changed probably in the last 60 years. Uh, so one wonders why the butterflies have died out here. And um, I, I can't answer it. You know, I wish I could. And, and seeing these buddly is absolutely just laden. The branches are so heavy, you know, with the flowers and the butterflies on them. They're hanging down and they're just... You know, if you went up to them and disturbed them, a whole flock of butterflies would fly off. Amazing, lovely to see, um, but sadly not now. Um, I don't know. I wish I knew what the answer was. <laughs> uh, sadly, you know, it's it's like so many species, isn't it? Um, we can only try, as I say. Um, we do all up this. We, you know, um, try and keep it wild um, in the spring um, as habitats, and um, but when you've got 300 acres of natural habitat and you've still not got the wildlife, uh, you wonder how you can, you know, whether we can ever bring these butterflies back. This is grown in a pot, so it never gets too big. And um, as I say, as soon as I cut it, as soon as it's finished flowering, very shortly, probably by the end of this week, you can see it's just starting up there to um, go over now. You know, I shall cut the flowers off, but um, as you can see, um, we've got some lovely flower stems on it, and it smells, it smells absolutely gorgeous. It does, I love the smell of the buddleia, but um, as I say, not a butterfly, um, you know, in sight on it, sadly. Um, there's not even any bees today, but um, it is windy today, so um, perhaps I'm expecting, you know, um, but very sad, as I say, because this was such a, I mean, I think its nickname, what we used to call it as children, is the butterfly bush, for that very reason. So, um, there we go. How things have changed in 50 years sadly not not for the better really in this instance by a long way Well, there we go. I've just managed to find a uh, white butterfly. I think it's the, like the common, what I call a cabbage white butterfly. Um, 
So there's still one or two butterflies about, but um, it's quite a nice, you know, I think all butterflies are attractive, even, even you know, I know if you grow brassicas, these can be devils, there it goes, um, you know, with the caterpillars, but um, even so, they are so lovely to see. So, um, I just wondered how butterflies are doing in your area, whether you're seeing more butterflies than I am. Funny enough, um, just as a very brief ending, um, I did speak to somebody um, who kind of watches and looks at numbers of butterflies in, in the county of where I live in the UK, and um, they were very likewise concerned this year that um, the butterfly numbers are down even further and it does seem that um, strangely enough they were saying the uh, Red Admiral numbers are really up this year and um, I've made this video over a couple of weeks as I very often do and I have seen quite a few more Red Admiral butterflies around here basically that's all I'm seeing I have seen a couple of tortoiseshell butterflies small tortoiseshells and I've even seen a couple of the like what I call little meadow blue butterflies which is very nice to see those but just two um, a brief glimpse as they sort of fluttered past um, but yeah plenty of Red Admirals and that seems the norm in the county of where I'm living um, it seems that they, oh, they were explaining to me that it seems they can adapt better to like the really hot conditions we had last year. And um, it seems that other varieties like the peacock and the small tortoise shell and, and many other the varieties which are, you know, I, I don't know all their names. Um, but they obviously really suffered in that really, really hot weather we had um, at the end of July and it was quite a sustained period of hot weather and dry weather as well and um, and like me they're also concerned about the vast number of more windy days we seem to get now um, but obviously it's devastating when you think that you know we have over 50 years we've lost 80 percent of the butterfly population and it was really brought home to me this year looking at the buddleia here in the garden that you know it didn't have well to be honest it didn't have one butterfly on it and I also think things like you know when you look we uh, there's vast portions of front gardens have been done away with families have two three four even five cars where I live and they want, obviously naturally, I'm not blaming people, they want, you know, uh, off-road parking for vehicles very often. So, you know, I think down this road where I live, there's about 40 odd houses. And really there's a couple of us that have got, you know, colorful front gardens left with flowers in. And I mean, front gardens used to be little bits of corridors for butterflies, you know, to get about, you know, with plenty of, um, flower and nectar source um, and sadly that's gone um, so I think it's a huge combination of reasons and, and um, very sad but perhaps where you are you're having you're seeing more butterflies um, I hope so anyway and as always um, I hope your garden goes well and good gardening wherever you are in the world and uh, thanks for watching and um, until next time my best wishes and bye for now